May thanks for joining on CNBC TV 18. This is election special, and I am today joined by a former IPS officer who was a Mumbai Police Commissioner and now a BJD uh, candidate for Lok Sabha election here in Bhuvaneshwar. May thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18, sir. My first question to you is: What are the challenges for this particular constituency, considering it's an urban as well as a, a rural area for you to contest? What are you betting big on for the votes? It's basically, uh, Bhuvaneshwar is the capital and uh, this is the place, uh, I think uh, for the last 19, last more than 20 years, this has been held by the BJD. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the assembly segments are also held by BJD. They are very strong uh, basin of the party. And naturally being the capital and uh, uh, it's a prominent, uh, it's a prominent, uh, uh, I think, seat. Uh, so I have been assigned this by the chief minister. Uh, we have uh, almost 50 percent of the voting population is here. Uh, that is, in th we have got three constituencies, mm -hmm. but equally that numbers are on the outskirts. I would call them outskirts, except uh, perhaps one constituency, Bolgad Be Begunia, which is mm -hmm. maybe about an hour from here. Otherwise, all fall within. Uh, you know, distance, uh, uh, motorable distance of within Wana. I can cover all the mm -hmm. places. And although they are rural, they have a very strong uh, connect with Bhuvaneshwar. And maybe Katak and Puri on the one side and the Puri, one side and Katak on the other side. So th we can call them semi urban, uh, so to say. Okay. Yeah. The manifesto of BJD has focused mostly on youth and farmers. Do you think you have to connect with the youth and farmers or there is more that you need to do for the people to vote? No, with the youth I have been connecting with them because for the last six, last eight months mm -hmm. I have been uh, with uh, Biju Iba Bahin, if you have heard of that. Mm -hmm. So this is some uh, youth uh, volunteer mm -hmm. force which I set up. Uh, the agenda and the entire uh, concept was obviously the chief ministers. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as I am concerned, I set up the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, naturally with the help of the state administration. But that is something I was uh, uh, involved very, very passionately and very, very intimately. for the. So I was doing very pretty little, uh, in fact I was not doing any party work, mm -hmm. but only the BG Vahini work. And BG Vahini work is not a party work as such, it's a government, uh, it was a government thing which I have resigned because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, Continue with that. So, I what do you gather after all the experience that you've got gathered no, from my, the yeah. youth welfare uh, programs? Yeah, yeah. For, for me, it was, uh, you know, this is something which uh, uh, I had uh, exposure to. This is mm -hmm. something in my domain uh, because leading a force, getting them organized, getting the logis logistics correct, mm -hmm. getting, uh, uh, you know, I had interacted with people because my police career has been that only. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially in Bombay, especially in Maharashtra, the, unless you understand the youth, you don't control law and order, you don't mm -hmm. control rights, you don't control, because they are in the forefront either way, right. either controlling or failing. Mm -hmm. They are the, it's not the young, small children or the elderly people, these are the people. Now that being the case, so I had known about their psychology, mm -hmm. I had known about their uh, thing, and most importantly, since I am a boy from Odisha, uh, I am from a village uh, background mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to Katak. I was in a Oriya medium school before I jumped on to a boarding school outside. So I knew what it is to be in Odia, what it is to be outside, what are the aspirations uh, and what uh, they are looking at. So those things were there in my mind and with that uh, input, with that background, I could uh, take up this job and uh, I focused on three things. The Odias, you know, the especially the youth, mm -hmm. uh, because they are very volatile. They can create havoc and they can also do a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. So I put them to a lot of good things. People had imagined that, uh, you know, these the boys, they would run amok. They would be some kind of refrab, they would indulge in hooliganism like normally happens. You know, mm -hmm. this senat, that senat, that vahini, you know, have mm -hmm. heard of them. You know, the vigilantes, the lynching stuff. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Very easily it can happen. Mm -hmm. This is a question of how you direct them. I put them on a very positive trail. Uh, they were involved in, you know, rescue operations in when the, uh, you know, the storm came, that Titali or whatever. Right. And uh, 
Similarly, they're involved in the world hockey. They, now, this particular force of 270,000, which has spread all over the panchayat mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. they are involved in the implementation of various welfare schemes for the government. Okay. So I was very intimately involved. So I had a very nice rapport with them. I still have. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my learning, I would say, more than me teaching them, mm -hmm. that what is their aspirations? What are their, what do they want? Is it only the, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, support from the government or whether they have much bigger aspirations and much bigger. So this is one area which uh, I think I have uh, a fine connect with them. As far as, uh, uh, you know, we have missed out one thing uh, which I have not been able to connect or address so far because I was involved in mm -hmm. this. The BJD is huge, uh, huge support among the women. Okay. Huge means it's just you have to go to the villages, you have to mm -hmm. go to the bastis and the slums. Mm -hmm. You have to find out. Mm -hmm. The way these, uh, uh, you know, the ladies, especially the poor ladies, they support because they've started two very significant uh, initiatives. One is the Mission Sakti right. and uh, Mahila Sasakti or mm -hmm. you know. So it's not just on paper. The implementation, because everything lies on not only conceptualizing a particular thing, but the implementation. You saw the demonetization. Right. You know, you saw the GST. I don't think that they're all bad schemes. Mm -hmm. But the problem came up in implementation. Okay. It's the Tughlaqian kind of thing because mm -hmm. in Tughlaq also was... was so how else uh, could have it been implemented? Who? The GST or no, the demonetization. Demonetization. You, demonetization, you give cash, you should have got the cash. They didn't have that much amount. Mm -hmm. We had to wait. Suppose I... You know, suppose I get, gave my, you know, existing cash, what was on me, mm -hmm. you know, I deposited. Now, naturally, I would like to survive on something. It's my own cash. So I w had to stand in the ATMs. Mm -hmm. For a person like me, mm -hmm. I had to stand in the ATM for 10, 15 days to get back 2,000 rupees. So this was how it happened. So they would have easily factored that the moment you give something, you get it returned immediately. So that inventory control or the logistics did not mm -hmm. work. In GST also, till today, mm -hmm. people don't know how to fill in any form. So, the, the homework has not been done. Okay. It, yes, the demonetization, I believe, was done to neutralize the Mayavati factor. They thought that uh, in UP and all these people have gathered a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. So, the, that, was, I mean, that was the impression, that was the assumption. So, yeah. GST is uh, still a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, um, since we talked about the youth part, yeah. unemployment is at the highest as per the reports. And that's one of the mm. points which is touching all the parties with regards yeah. to manifesto. How are you prepared? Because yeah. uh, uh, ironically, Odisha is a minerally rich state, has a lot of revenue in terms of royalty. And otherwise, yeah. manufacturing is there. How do you intend to... Uh, empower the youth of Odessa so that they don't go outside the state? No, this is a, when you are talking about unemployment, it's a pan-Indian uh, mm -hmm. phenomenon. It's not confined to, and there's a massive deficit in all the places. That's, that's, but this is not something which has come up overnight. Mm -hmm. You have to, whenever you, you know, compare the performances, you have to have a relative period. That is before and after. Mm -hmm. What was it before and what is it now? Is it better or is it worse? I would uh, believe, and I, I think statistics indicate that way, that things are not, things are getting better mm -hmm. in Odisha as it, this thing. Odisha primarily, you are talking about minerals, you are talking about so many other things like the, you know, nature's, uh, the tourism potential, etc. Mm -hmm. et so many things are here. I don't think anything is richer than, and the most importantly, the human potential. Mm -hmm. People are intelligent here. People are, uh, you know, nice and soft. They are welcoming. They are simple. And they're hardworking. Intellectual capital is huge. If you see anywhere, I'm not being parachute, but anywhere, you'll find the Odia, Odia boys, by and large, they are intelligent. And that is one area, whether in IT sector, whether in the academics, they excel. Mm -hmm. Now, how to tap them? They have, naturally, if you get better potential, you go to America, you go to London. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my son is in London now. He's doing finance there. Obviously, if he's getting X amount in London, he can't get that in Bhubaneswar or maybe in Mumbai. Right. So he travels there. So they always go to travel to those areas which, especially the youth, where the opportunities and maybe the compensations are much more. Mm -hmm. Now, in Odisha, as I said, traditionally, this has, this has been a total agricultural economy. 
it is a consumer economy. There has been not much of uh, manufacturing mm -hmm. activities here. Mm -hmm. But what is happening now, in the last couple of years, I would say, the Naveen government has been focused on this. And results are showing. The results are showing. If you take a... I have been out all the time, so I was in Maharashtra Kader. I would travel sometimes on flight. Whenever I would travel on flights, first of all, the travels, the flights were all empty, most of them. And most of the fellows would be Odias only. Mm -hmm. Now, almost 90% of the passengers, they talk in India, non Odias. Why would they come to a state? Mm -hmm. And they are not the typical tourist and coming for some darshans. They are, you know, they are business people. So last time when this hockey was there, there was 25 uh, chat planes uh, parked there. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's Birla, whether it's Ambani, whether it's anyone, all of them were here. Why would they come here? You know, they are not, the businessmen are no fools. And most of them coming to Odisha, risking their, uh, you know, equation with the center. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, they are all these businessmen, and everyone is on the scanner. Yeah. Whoever is not with the particular party, mm -hmm. he becomes an anti-national. So that's how the narrative goes. Mm -hmm. So risking that, they come here, meet the chief minister, and uh, invest here, promise all these things. I think it's a big plus. You have a fierce competition in Aprajita Sarangi, who yeah. is fielded yeah. from BJP, yeah. and she herself has been in the Indian Administrative yeah. Services, yeah. and she has done a lot for the city as such. Do you feel the heat right now after no, campaigning? No, I, I don't. I don't feel. Num number one, uh, there is another uh, also person in the fray. He is Janardhan Pati, Congress candidate. Mm -hmm. I don't think we don't talk about him. Mm -hmm. You see, I am from this area. The point is. I am from Odisha, mm -hmm. I am a native of this place mm -hmm. and I have a, obviously a very firm right to be here. Mm -hmm. Now if you ask me to, if somebody gave me a chance to fight from Bihar, UP or Maharashtra, I don't think they will give me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, Raj Thakre or Uddhav Thakre would like the idea. They will make me a commissioner, they will make me a DZ, mm -hmm. but no way they will allow me to mm -hmm. come into their political arena. Right. Same thing would happen in Bengal or Bihar. Mm -hmm. So obviously being from this place, being a native from here, mm -hmm. I feel at home and I feel that I have a bigger right by virtue of that. Come what may, whatever the... So this is my perception. Uh, I'm open to... Uh, but do you think the right will work over yes. the execution of no. actual plans in terms of education and you other see, things that... Uh, you tell me. You tell me today's mm -hmm. how many people the BJP has almost 282 in the... Uh, members in the parliament. Mm -hmm. Apart from the Prime Minister and Amit Shah, which MP is doing what? And which MP can do what? And which MP has any mandate to do what? Mm -hmm. Person like Adwani, I don't think has spoken in the last five years. So, saying that I would do this, I would do that, it doesn't work out that way. Here is the regional party, headed by Navin Patnaik, whose every action is uh, oriented towards Odisha and Odias. So, that being the case, I would be, you know, if I am elected, I would be implementing his, you know, whatever he ex expects me to do. Mm -hmm. There is no question of uh, being individualistic and, uh, you know, uh, playing your own uh, fantasies or own games. You mm -hmm. can't do that. In a parliamentary or in an assembly thing, as on today, whatever the way it exists, you have to go by the party line, by the party supremo. They tell you how to go, what to do. And within that framework, you do things. Whatever my ideas are, you know, whatever, let's say I was a policeman. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of ideas of doing things. But I couldn't do that. I had to go by the leadership, by the formations, Correct. by the command formation. Mm -hmm. Here the same thing exists. So saying that I will do this, I will do that. You see, as I said, 280 MPs mm. of the BJP who are there, they are doing precious nothing because they are not allowed to do anything. Now let me ask you, what kind of relationship does BJD and BJP has? Mm. Now your Chief Minister mm. Naveen Patnaik has told Network 18 mm. that he will support the party post-voting, only the one that supports Odisha. Your manifesto talks about new Odisha, strong Odisha. What, are, what is that uh, Odisha wants from the government which will be formed post-May 23? I think this is an answer which the... As I said, the chief has already spoken mm -hmm. and uh, by protocol or by, as I said, I mean, it won't be proper for me to speak anything on this. Mm -hmm. But I think he has clarified. I think he's uh, 
he has immaculate command over the English language mm -hmm. uh, and he's very brief, concise and you know, he's very straight on every point. Mm -hmm. I don't think he dodges any question. Mm -hmm. He may be very cryptic, but I think every answer is uh, to the point. He doesn't avoid, the chief minister doesn't avoid any uh, any question, whatever you put to him. The, the people have been provoked, trying to provoke him on various things. I won't talk about that. Mm -hmm. But he takes it to the, you know, kind of very, very uh, proper demeanor. He doesn't get irritated. I have not seen him getting irritated with any channels. Why channels? With anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not something one has to learn from him. And uh, my temperament has been little otherwise, being in the force and I've been a... So my main learning and my main aspiration here, if you ask me, is to how to be a, a bit like him mm -hmm. in, in respect of uh, attitude, behavior, decorum, manners. I think, I think every, not only Odia, I think everyone, uh, everyone in the country, mm -hmm. uh, they must look to him at least for these, uh, you know, these attributes. Well, my last question to you is, yeah. what will be the top three ideas that you will implement if you win and what are the numbers that you're looking at in terms of margin and how much reach will you have with the voters? Yeah. You know, uh, if you ask me personally, my heart lies in two areas. Mm -hmm. One is the youth, which uh, something I feel that's one area because I have limited numbers of active life left. Mm -hmm. I've joined it after. This is not my real career. My real career was in the police. I've joined this, uh, you know, I've been given this opportunity, I would say, more than joining, mm -hmm. after retirement. So I have, I should say, I have very, I'm not a young uh, politician. I have very limited years of active life left. So I have to do double time. And the double time, there are many areas. I can't say this is better and this is more, mm -hmm. you know, this has more priority. I can focus on children. I can focus on ladies, uh, women. I can focus on old people and I can focus on, as far as the young children are concerned, you know, babies or young children or infants, their health, mm -hmm. these areas, you know, this is some areas which I may not see the fruits in due course. Mm -hmm. I believe that if I focus on the youth, maybe from 15 to 25 or to 30, mm -hmm. this is something and I can make out, make some difference mm -hmm. in their attitude, in their careers, you know, this result I can see in my lifetime. This is my way of looking at things. Other area which I have been doing mm -hmm. is that I have been involved with uh, treatment of cancer patients for the last 30 years. Yes. So whenever anyone, initially it happened by chance, by accident, some people from Odisha had come to uh, 1992 when I was a deputy commissioner there mm -hmm. uh, for treatment and Tata. They had approached me finding out I was a Odia. Mm -hmm. And I had asked my sub-inspector to help them out. They were, uh, you know, helped out. Mm -hmm. and they made a, you know, kind of press conference here saying that Arup Patnaik is there and helping. There is, it resulted in a lot of people coming to me. So that started that process. So I got involved in that and it, it was not confined to Odias later mm -hmm. on. Anybody came from. So slowly, slowly I built up that rapport with Tata Memorial Hospital, which culminated in my starting that Konar Cancer Foundation after my retirement. Okay. We provided, provide logistical support mm -hmm. to all needy outstation cancer patients coming for treatment to Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. It is an integrator aggregator model and that has been doing very well. Anyone, any cancer patient anywhere in the country, they give me, a, me or my people one missed call or that number mm -hmm. and then you take it forward. Mm -hmm. We do all sorts of, uh, you know, logistical help mm -hmm. interventions. Mm -hmm. Now this is something which is still going on. So that being the case and other things, I have been involved to a great extent with helping people in health areas. Okay. With my Mumbai police corps with uh, Mumbai people, with Maharashtra people, and also people coming from Odisha to Mumbai. So this other area, one I told you is the youth, the most other area of my heart, you know, if you call it my hobby, mm -hmm. more than uh, giving back to the society, I call it a hobby, like mm -hmm. when gardening we are seeing. Mm -hmm. So these are my hobbies. Reading is my hobby, mm -hmm. uh, gardening is my hobby, and this health care is my hobby. So I would like to put myself in these two sectors if the party desires that way. Well, all the best on that note. Thank you for joining us here on CNBC. Thank you.